So you just bought a really sweet German car with a convertible top and you're ready to go cruising in the summertime temperatures, but it quit working. Now what? Let's find out. Let's get started. So today we have two R129s, the other one you can't see, it's off to the side with convertible top issues, and this is Mrs. Wizard's 1998 BMW Z3, and its convertible top has never worked. We're going to show you some ways that sometimes, depending on the car, you may not even need it to work. So let's go ahead and start with the one that's off camera. This is a 2000 Mercedes SL500, and this is the years of... SL500. We'll show you the other one here in a minute, which is 500 SL. It gets kind of confusing. You guys have actually just seen this one on a, a video not too long ago where I talked about we would show you part two where it's finally all torn apart and why does it cost so much money and what goes wrong with these things. If you're looking at one of these older 129s or R129, it might be very likely that you have to end up doing this job. Or if you just purchase one and it's squirting fluid or it's not working. These are some things you may be looking into very soon. Let's go ahead and take a look at the parts table and what all had to come apart and why they leak. So here we have on the table where Grimes has disassembled the whole system and pulled all the cylinders out. And we mentioned in the previous video that even pulling the assembly out with the cylinder still attached you have to go even further when you send these off for rebuild. They're going to be like, no, we'll send it back because you need to disassemble these all the way, all the way to the cylinder, which isn't really all that hard, but they don't want this. They just want the cylinder part of it that are inside of these. So I'll show you a little quick pan of all the parts and cylinders, which on this car, there are 11, but on the maroon one, there's 12. To completely different systems, even though they're kind of the same. So a lot of these latch assemblies and things are the same between the two cars. And, but here you can see all the cylinders that have been removed. These are in the rear, in the trunk. These are the main lift cylinders. These are some also in the bow system. These are some latch cylinders. And these are actually in the windshield up there, the header up top, that operate the latches up there. So where do these things leak? They actually don't leak from where the lines connect. They leak on the shaft right there. You can see there's a black O-ring that's around the shaft there. This actually comes apart and you can replace the seals, which we'll be sending these off to have them done. But it leaks right here, all spurting out all over inside your car. Were all these leaking? No, they weren't all leaking. But Grimes noticed when he started pulling them apart, there's a few that were just starting to leak. So the one thing we do when we have one of these that have even one or two leaking, we do all of them or none of them. And I'll show you the reason why. These have actually been rebuilt in the past. I'll show you some dates that are inscribed. Some of them are multiple, multiple years ago. Some of them not very long ago. You can see eighth month of 2009 and the initials of person that rebuilt them. But there you can see six month of 2018. So you can see as this car has had one or two leaks here or there, they only did just one cylinder or two cylinders and left the others alone. And that's a bad idea because months later, the next ones start leaking. And then a year or two later, the next ones start leaking. Some of these have been done relatively like 2018. That's still seven years ago. We're going to start fresh with all of them rebuilt. We're going to start from zero so that the customer can enjoy all of them rebuilt for many years to come. You really get into trouble with these when you say, I'll just do this one, it's leaking, and leave the rest alone. That's not the way to do it. The ones that haven't been rebuilt before, those are the ones starting to leak now. We're just going to start from scratch and do all of them. Now let's take a look, where were all these things located and how much did we have to take apart to get to them? So you can see Grimes has a lot of interior panels off, also some speakers, also some trunk panels. Tons of things have to come apart just to get to these things. Let's go ahead and open the top and show you where they were at. So I've got this opened up a little bit so you can take a peek inside. 
there's all of these electronics and things. You can see that there's the roll top control module over there, which you'll see in a minute is completely different from the 1993 we're going to look at. You can see all those, look at those lines guys, there's tons of lines and hoses and solenoid blocks, all kinds of parts that can fail, which normally don't fail on these, it's usually just the cylinders. So I'll go ahead and open this little shell up. So now you can take a look down in there and see where a lot of cylinders have been removed. A lot of things are missing and there's some lines that are opened up. Quite a lot of doing just to get these pieces and parts out. Let's go ahead and open the trunk. You can see where one was mounted here and it connects to lots of linkages and things that are up inside. It's really hard to see. There's two cylinders that would go there, a latch and a cylinder. And same story over here and you can see the lines that went to them. They're little Hydro These are actually hydraulic lines just like you would find on a tractor. They're just really tiny. So that's where we're at with this one. All the cylinders out. I'll be sending them off to be rebuilt. And then the reassembly process starts with this whole car all over again. But let's go talk about what happened with the Maroon 1993 500SL. Now I want you to know that this is SL500. The one over there is older enough that it's still 500SL. It's kind of backwards. These cars look very similar, but there's a lot of things, electronics and some of the control inside that are not similar. This one actually, we did a lot of work to this one and got a lot of things fixed. Then the customer took it to have new upholstery put on the actual soft top. And it came back and they said the top is not working. They'd like to find out what happened or why. Let's go ahead and open up the hatch and take a look at the soft top. It's brand new material. So I got my wrench here. Got that one popped loose. I'll go over to that side. One thing that's different on the 2000 we just saw is it has 11 cylinders. This one has 12. There's an extra one to hold down the latch. I'll show you. Right here you can see on that side there's actual hydraulic latch. It does not have that on the 2000. It just has a little manual operating little clip. But this one has a locking hydraulic latch on both sides, so it has one extra cylinder. Now let's take a look at this convertible top material. You can see it's been redone, but it's not working. They want to know why. I'm just showing you guys it's all new stuff, but I'll show you what happens. I'll put this back in the fully stowed position, and I'll show you when I try to operate the top what it's doing and what we found. Unlike the 2000 model that's sitting over there, which you can just slam it shut with your hand, well, probably don't want to slam it, but you know what I mean, push it. This one requires a manually lock on this side as well. So I need to go in, get my little 11 millimeter wrench. There we go, and got that. Everything's fully locked into place now. I'll turn on the key. You should be able to go all the way up and down with this top. I'll show you what it does. So here's our little button to operate the soft top. It just flashes. It does nothing. Even our roll bar is dead. Nothing. This isn't a new enough car with fancy screens and all kinds of things that can tell you, hey, something's wrong or this is wrong, or maybe even do onboard diagnostics. You actually have to have a scan tool to see what's wrong. So this one came in, like I mentioned, and the customer's like, I try to do my top now and it's doing nothing. What is going on here? So I'll show you the tool that we use. On the older models, 91, 92, there's actually a 16 pin connector under the hood. But this one is kind of a weird year where it has the 38 pin. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Some of this information on this model is old enough I had to actually go to my friend Cameron from DC Motor Works. He's the owner there in Alpharetta, Georgia. He is a Mercedes like magical guru. Really, really good at it. I have done tons of these, but they've all been 95, 6, 7, 2000. This one's really an older model, so. 
Cameron said, well, there should be a 16-pin connector on the older models that you actually can use a little pin and jump the connector and actually count the blink codes, the old flash codes, which should be right here next to this strut tower, but it's not. This doesn't have the 16-pin connector. It has the 38-pin, as you can see down in there. So jumping pins on this is not going to work. So you have to have star diagnostics to connect to this, which we do, and I'll go get the cart and show you what it looks like. Um, dear, it looks like you're about to do CPR on this Mercedes. It kind of does look like a defibrillator or something, but it's not. This is actually the Mercedes scan tool, and you can see here's our 38-pin connector. It just connects in right there. This will light up, and then we use the star diagnostic software to scan the car. And everything works great. It can talk to the ECM. It can talk to all kinds of different modules on here, and even the soft top module. But the roll bar module is dead. It doesn't even list it. It's like it's not even there. And I talked to Cameron again, and he said, that module's probably dead. Let's show you where it's at. Just like the 2000 we just looked at, it's very similar. It's behind the back seat underneath these little security totes or whatever you want to call them. But it's not the same module. Let's take a look. There's our control top module for the soft top. Obviously that's not going to plug and play with the 2000 model. It's completely different. But the one we're actually looking at sits in the center. I'm going to have to pull out this entire interior in the rear to get to it. And I'm going to have to either send that off to repair or maybe get a good used one. Once that's working, then the rest of the soft top will, will work. But right now, the soft top control module actually has codes for the roll bar. It's no communication. Something's wrong there. And it can't see where the roll bar is at. And it's like, well, I'm not even going to try to operate the top because I don't know what's going on with the roll bar. So that will likely take care of this issue. Two similar Mercedes models. Completely different years, completely different problems. These are things to think about if you're looking to purchase one or you just purchased one and it stopped working. It can get very expensive very, very fast. But luckily on some of the smaller models, like a Porsche Boxster, you remember the black one we had, Mrs. Wizard? I still wish we had that one. Its convertible top had died as far as power operation. And similar situation has happened on this one. But they're so small, it's such a lightweight car, it doesn't even matter. Let me show you. So on this one, it has a power soft top as well. It's a lot less complicated than either one of these cars, but it has died, and we're not going to fix it. The reason why, and just like on a Boxster, probably even on a 911, you can just manually put it up. It's so easy. Let me show you. That's it. And you can lock it in with the like you normally would, even with the power system working, you still have to manually lock them up here on the windshield header. And then when you want to put it down, you unlock it and... Why do you want to spend five grand to get this thing fixed? You don't need to. You can manually just put it up and down. It's actually faster to manually do it and easier. And on some of these, you can actually do it in the car. Just reach behind you, throw it up over, and lock it into place. So it's kind of a crapshoot. On some German cars, your soft top stops working. Who cares? Just manually put it up or down and you're good to go. But on these, the R129s, there's tons of latches and sequences and things and flaps and they all have to work in sequence. It's way, way complicated to manually operate it. And after a while, you're like, I'm tired of this. I got to get this fixed. This may likely just be a few hundred bucks to get this fixed. But on the 2000, thousands of dollars to get it fixed. Wait, 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 wizard. Did you just tell the world that a BMW, a car you normally hate, has a better convertible top system than the R129? It actually does. Because it's a smaller car, the system is smaller, it's lighter. There's no complex flaps and things moving around. You can just open and close it. And like I mentioned on the Boxster, and there's many other smaller German cars that you can probably get away with not fixing the top. You can just manually do it yourself. You just have to have whatever tools necessary to lock and unlock at the windshield header. But there are also many cars like these that are very, very complicated. It really depends on what kind of car you're looking at. 
that it can be like, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to spend the bucks and go through the whole system. Now there is a third option, even with one of these. Put the top down and never put it up again. Get a car cover or something. You just take it out only on a sunny, warm day, and otherwise it stays in the garage and put a car cover on it. That is a possibility. But I've been finding a lot of people that have these older Mercedes cars or 129s, they're like, I want this to work like it's supposed to work. I like the whole system working. It's cool to watch it work, and they're willing to spend the bucks. I have probably been through 15 or more of the R129s, the newer ones, with full system rebuilds, where people are like, I don't care what it costs. I want it to work again. Outside of the soft off system, which is complicated and expensive. These are awesome cars. I really like them. They're, they're not bulletproof like a Toyota or something, but they're very, very good, and they're not super hard to work on other than the convertible top. So the, the purpose of this video is to talk about German cars with convertible tops. You just bought one and it quit working. What's next? It could be just quit using the power function and do it manually. Or it could be, I want it to work like it was again and it's going to cost four grand and I don't care, I want it fixed. It just depends on what you want to do and what direction you want to go. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to work on either of these cars, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We'll get a small cut and we really appreciate it if you purchase anything there. Check out Mrs. Wizard's Ways. She's got some really good content going on there. There's a link in the description for that as well. And make sure to click the subscribe button because we've got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.